Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to create a RESTful web service in Java. I'm going to use Jersey library for that, so uh, you might want to go and download Jersey jars first. So just click on the first link, uh, you will get an official website. So click on the download option, so at the time it's Jersey 2.0 version. Uh, if you're using any higher version, so that, that's not going to be a problem. So once you downloaded that folder and then extracted all the files, you'll see three different folders. Each folder holds different jars. So don't worry about all these jars. Just come back to your IDE and then create a new project. Uh, I'm going to create a dynamic. Sorry about that. I'm going to create a dynamic web project here, and then I'm going to name it as WS Demo Web Service Demo, and I'm going to set my target as Apache Tomcat. So if you are using any uh, other containers, don't worry, that's not going to be a problem. So once you have created a project, just go to your webin library folder and then paste all the charts available. So in all the three folders. So paste it there. So go to second folder and then again copy all the jars and then paste it here. So again go to third folder copy all the jars so the good thing is uh, you're not going to use all these jars in our project so you may use s uh, f five or six jars so when you are uh, really implementing real world web services you may use different kind of jars so it's always better to keep all the jars in your project so once you have copied you can straight away go and create your code so go to your source and then create a new package so I'm gonna call my package as book just for my convenience well in my book I'm gonna create a new class here Java class so I'm going to name it as book well this is just normal class nothing new for now so quickly I'm going to create a hello world you know method say hello well just simple as that I'm just gonna return something let's say a response create a variable response so this is just a normal uh, web method guys sorry normal Java method so nothing new until now so if you want to make any class as a web resource sorry a web service you're going to use some annotations so I, I hope you you guys know what is a annotation so there I'm going to use a uh, five or six annotation in this project so all these annotations are already defined in these jersey libraries so that's why we're going to import the jersey library so first first annotation I'm going to use today is path annotation well this path annotation specifies the defines the URI for your web service S uh, suppose if I say slash book as my path you can access this class via your domain slash book and if you specify this path as suppose let's say uh, am I any mine you can access this class via your domain slash mine well that's how the path works well uh, I'm just gonna stick to book so if a client request here URI as domain slash book it's going to execute this class so as simple as that let me quickly import this path annotation alright the next annotation I'm going to use is get annotation well I hope you guys are familiar with HTTP methods like uh, get post put delete so if you're going to use get method you will specify get if you're going to use post you will specify at the rate of post well that's that's just pretty simple well the ne next annotation is produces well you can you can easily guess the purpose of this annotation by its name itself well produces means it's actually producing something to the client well if it is taking something from the client if it is taking uh, if it is taking something from the client you will say consumes well there are two alternatives available one is produces and then is consumes well the name itself defines everything so i don't have to explain about these things uh, suppose if you're using any put or post annotation here well I think you might use consumes 
for now I'm, I'm going to choose producers itself so the next thing is we have to specify what is the exchange format so you guys know the exchange formats like there are different ex ex exchange formats available you have XML and then you have JSON etc so depending on your requirement you will specify what is the exchange format is going to be suppose uh, if you are going to use XML as your exchange format I will type media type dot well it's going to reflect all the types available let's say text dot XML alright now I'm going to import this one as well so now you are saying that uh, my response is going to be in XML so good thing is that you can create another function just to respond in a JSON format uh, suppose if you specify it as application dot JSON JSON it's going to respond in JSON format well just just change that to JSON say hello XML well if the request type is XML it's going to execute this method and if the request type is JSON it's going to execute this method well as simple as that but for now I'm just going to stick to you know uh, XML itself so I'm just going to comment on this one so I'm just going to uh, just simply respond with a simple XML so guys if you're facing any problem you can just comment on in, in YouTube section comment I will try to respond as soon as possible on it the response let's say you know hello well now you have a simple response in XML now when you are using in real world uh, you might use some extra libraries uh, to create an XML format well uh, Java sorry JSA itself has one extra library called JX JAX B well it can be used to create XML and JSON formats easily so I'm not going to discuss about that for now so this is your coding part uh, you just use three different annotations one is path used for to define your URI or URL whatsoever and your HTTP method and then whether it's producing or producing or consuming and then your exchange format XML or JSON and what of the core part here so if you want to so what are the core things you have to do you can just create a separate class for your core part and then you can just use object and then you know response bull just pull response in this method so now you have now you are done with coding part now the next thing is you just have to specify few things in web.xml well I'm just going to say that hey I'm going to use my jersey library this jersey library as my server dispatcher so I'm just going to simply copy few XML tags here. Well, if you have already developed any, you know, web apps, you might be familiar with this XML tags. Well, you see, you have servlet tag and then you have servlet mapping tag here. Well, nothing new here. So uh, I'm just going to call my servlet name as, let's say, Java Web Service. I'll just copy and paste it in servlet mapping also well uh, well this is where the typical part comes uh, you have to specify server class that acts as you are you know server container so you you might want to go and point out that in your package so go to java go to libraries and then in web app libraries you can see all the libraries which you have downloaded and then pasted here so just point out to a jar that's called java container server core that's the jar we are looking for well in the jar you will see four different packages uh, just click on the first package that's called jersey.servlet package well in that servlet package the class you are looking for is servlet container so this is the class which you want so just copy the class and then paste it here in servlet class well now this class is going to act as your server dispatcher well if you're using any other version like 3.4 uh, it might change a little bit but 
you can easily find out in your jersey documentation don't worry about that for now just just copy and paste the exact class well uh if you notice here we have init param tag here so in in init param tag i'm just going to copy another you know jersey thing here so this is just a jersey keyword for package uh, you can straight away copy and paste it here my god why can't i access my clips now well i'm sorry yeah so this is just a simple keyword just simply copy and paste that one in param name tag well as a param value you're going to specify the package of your web resource sorry web service well this is my web service class so this is my package book i'm just going to copy it and then paste it here well you are done this one other thing you have to finish you're just going to specify your url pattern well well there's nothing to say much here if you're using your a web service as your top domain you can just say slash or slash star like whatever the url that are coming to your domain it will automatically uh, you know route it to your web service so as simple as that suppose instead of home routing if you are using another subdomain like slash rest or like that uh, your url will be like this suppose your domain slash rest slash you know book well, let me explain that in a clear manner suppose if you uh, specify your web.xml url mapping as slash rest uh, just like that here your url is going to be your domain suppose domain.com slash rest slash your your class uri like uh, the one i specified before slash book well there's nothing to confuse guys uh, if you don't specify anything here like if you want to map all the urls to your web service you can just remove this one and straight away use the url like that slash book so when you specify this like this domain.com slash book it's going to execute this book class directly and suppose if you specify slash rest your URL going to be slash rest slash book well, as simple as that guys i know it might be confusing a little bit but don't worry everything is going to be fine once you start and working so this is your configuration part you are done with coding and configuration now you can straight away go and execute your class sorry your project now just click on run as run on server just click finish well i know it might be confusing a little bit right now what is this you know URI like that but don't worry guys everything is going to be fine well as I told you this is my uh, WS demo class well, it might show error because I don't have any index dot uh, HTML file specified so it might get error because as I told you and this is my domain and as I told you if you want to execute my web service I have to type bvo ok and I hope it works yeah it's working fine see now I'm getting an XML response from a web service so this is how you create a simple web service well again guys this is a very very low level tutorial on web services uh, this is just a building block well as I told you can create any functions as can suppose if I create an another function for HTML well, let's just uncomment that and write and then I'm going to create an ex another exchange format for HTML well let's say it's say hello HTML and then exchange format is going to be as as told it's going to be up text.html uh, as a response I'm just going to say suppose hello html all right <coughs> i'm just going to restart my server now so when i try to execute now it will fetch html response well that's because your browser always try to request html format 
so it executed HTML method so when you are actually working from client side in your program if you try to request as XML it's going to accept XML and if you try to request JSON it's going to execute JSON so this is how you know web service work so before uh, ending this tutorial I want to explain one uh, last final thing so how to get inputs from the client as you know in your web application you can directly get inputs from client via uh, HTML forms or URLs etc but in web service you want to get input only via URLs URL. so if your uh, URL is book slash PHP that means he is actually sending PHP as an input parameter so you might want to access that PHP in your program here so for that you can so let me just remove all these things so for that you're going to create another annotation well that's that's the same annotation called path annotation but instead of specifying URI you're just going to specify it as a parameter by space specifying it is in double braces so I'm just gonna name it as parameter name let's say name for now okay and then you, you're just going to use that uh, you know, path name in your method whatever the method you're going to use path pan I'm just gonna import this one and then as usual name string name well this is how you take an input uh, you get input from the user uh, well actually it's path panel yeah it, it's, it's important now don't worry okay now uh, you can use whatever the suppose if the input is PHP that will be reflected in string name PHP so instead of just uh, saying hello XML you can just send dynamic data here like you know name alright now you are taking input from the user via URL and you are retrieving that here in and then you are just responding well this is the way how you take input from the user so let me see how that works in server so I'm just gonna quickly refresh my one sorry this I think server hasn't restarted it so I'm just gonna quickly restart my server so again guys this is just a very basic level so if you want to know advanced tutorials you can always follow my channel I will try to update new tutorials so the server restarted when you try to execute this one book slash suppose let's say PHP as my input where it's it responded with hello PHP let me join that it responded with hello PHP well this this is the input from the user you are actually just you know reflecting the input to the user as name when if you try to take input as suppose let's say anything it's going to respond with the same thing so this is very very low level tutorial guys so in my next video I'm going to show you how to consume a actual web service uh, just a follow up to this tutorial so don't forget to subscribe us stay tuned thanks for watching